Hey, this is Anthony with Revzilla TV, where you can watch, decide, and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new Bell Qualifier helmet available at Revzilla.com. New in the Bell lineup, the Qualifier is its brand new, sport-oriented, really what I'm going to call entry level into the family. If we look next to it, this is the original Bell Arrow. The Qualifier is replacing it, and honestly, it steals a lot of DNA from a lot of the more race-inspired helmets, like the Vortex, the RS1, the Star, encapsulates them just over that $100 mark, and it's a complete leap forward over what we saw in the previous Bell Arrow platform. If you see them side by side, as I'm going to do really, really quickly, completely different helmets. They're really from the outside in completely different, different shapes, different aerodynamic profiles. Bell spent a lot of time working that DNA down into a polycarb helmet. And at the end of the day, the end user, the entry level sport biker is left with a lot of bang for the buck. Again, in solids as well as graphics, this is the cam graphic just over that $100 mark. Now, there are a lot of key differences. I'm gonna walk through them in depth as we move through this video. But quickly, I'm gonna call out one of the big changes that's gonna make people very excited. The fit of the Bell Qualifier is now Intermediate Oval. Intermediate Oval tends to be the most popular for the American market. The original Bell Arrow was more of a round fit. It's nice to see them going this direction. The new RS1 is this fit, the new Star is this fit. This is a very consistent Bell fit now that we're seeing perpetuate through this helmet. Keep in mind too, if you're not sure about that, we're going to ship for free. You can always talk to a geek, and I'd love to hear your gut reaction and your questions as I begin to roll through this. Click here, subscribe to us at Revzilla TV, our YouTube channel. Comments, questions, feedback, your gut reaction. I certainly want to hear them, and we want to be able to answer questions on the fly. Now, let's dive into the outside and work our way in. Looking at it again, fast graphic here on the cam. Looking at the vent construction, much more aerodynamic profile. If I look at the arrow, which is right next to it, Look at how round this sucker is. Just very round, very round in its shape, very bulky in its shell shape and size. Again, you're still coming in in a polycarb shell around that three pounds, six ounce mark, which is extremely lightweight. It is only DOT rated. It's not going to be EC, it's not going to be Snell. If you need that additional rating, move up into something, it's Big Brother will be something like the Vortex. But if you look at it, they've even changed the vent configuration. On top, you're seeing low profile chimney vents that sweep back into a very nice and contoured spoiler that's built in with nice Venturi vents for exhaust that are gonna be free flowing out the back. If you look at the chin vent, stolen directly from the RS1 here on the cam graphic done in matte black, my chin vent is incorporated there. Again, the new style, new school belt. This is, again, them stealing that DNA and wrapping it into their more entry level price point. Notice along the side here how everything sweeps together. And you can again see when I pull it to the top, you're going to see that intermediate oval head shape bring its, way, bring its way narrow front to back, all the way back versus being a round shape. The other thing they changed is now they've gone to the same shield that we're seeing. It's UV resistant. It's going to be optically correct. It's the same shield we see on an RF1 or a new star. Nice touch. Why? Because you can upgrade to the photochromic bell transition shield if you want to go this direction. And remember, that saves you having to buy a secondary smoke shield when you hit the the outside light and the UV hits it, it immediately goes to a medium dark smoke or a medium smoke tint just by virtue of having the UV hit it and you don't have to do anything, you don't have to swap. I consider it an easy shield change mechanism. It's one of the easiest in the biz. Again, very simple. You saw I just pulled that lever and the side pod pops right off. Very simple to snap back on. Again, nice big gasket too, creating a nice seal around the eye port. Last piece to note on the shell is that there are three shell sizes on an entry level helmet, which I really, really like. A lot of times you'll see manufacturers that have to cut costs. They're not gonna do those additional molds. Bell has a full size range up to 2XL, 64 centimeters, so it will definitely accommodate those guys with big guy Mongo size heads. But again, when you're looking at it, they're giving you the range to not add weight because you're only getting enough shell as you need to be able to tune in that EPS and create safety and the correct amount of fit. Now, if I start to break it down from the inside out, let me reach over here. I'm going to grab my donut. Completely redesigned in the interior guts as well. It's going to be moisture wicking, antimicrobial. See the nice neck roll that pulls everything together, premium guts here. And again, you start to get some other bells and whistles when you move up into the vortex, into the star. But again, very simple in its design, meant to be fully removable, fully washable, fully cleanable, let you degunkify your helmet over time, especially if you're riding in the summertime, because we know that most of the sport bike crowd is really gonna be, especially here in the Northeast, going to be more warm weather centric. So again, you're gonna start to sweat, you're gonna be able to pull all this stuff out, get it rinsed off, let it air out, and give you the best chance to keep your, he your helmet comfortable and less gunky over time. Basic cheek pad design, nice contour. Again, moving into that intermediate oval head shape. This is that new style shape from Bell. 
Notice we also have speaker cutouts. This helmet, the way the neck roll is designed, it will take a comm system, a third party, so your Cardos, your Cena. There are other guys out there, the inner phones, that need to clamp onto this neck roll. You're going to be able to do that, no problem, and have plenty of room so those speakers aren't going to be pressing into your ears. A lot of times, helmets, when they don't have the speaker cutouts over a longer ride, you might start to feel those speakers. You're not going to get that here on the qualifier. Here's my 3D comfort liner. It comes out, again, this is entry level, so it's a little bit more basic in its design, but it is still 3D. You can see here, it's cutaways at the top to allow that air to circulate in through the scalp. And if you move it like this, you're going to see that they have the additional padding that goes around the brow line, really the crown of the head where you're going to sweat the most. Now, if I had to call it, I'd say that for me, these snaps are a little bit low on the horizon. So depending on your head shape, you may or may not feel them. But again, moving into the more premium lines of helmets, you start to make those investments. You get some of those additional creature comforts. Moving towards the inside, no surprises here. Big vent cutaways, 10 millimeter vent holes that sweep all the way back, moving towards those venturis, and then down the neckline. So you're going to get a great amount of ventilation through the top and down. Bell's perfected this again in the Star and the RS1 and the Vortex, and now they're stealing that DNA and working it into a helmet that, again, is just going to be over that $100 mark. So to sum up, what we like about this helmet is it's a tremendous amount of race-inspired DNA that we saw from the more expensive models trickle their way all the way down here into what they call their entry-level sport or universal application. You know, over time, though, depending on how much you ride and how hardcore you are, you might want to reach out for some of those more refined components, and that's where you have to make a larger investment. So again, you're trading bang for the buck factor for some of those nuances, but that's what you know you're getting into, especially if you need a secondary helmet or a, a secondary rider's helmet for two-up riding. Again, this could be a no-brainer option in your bag of tricks when it comes to helmets. The next step in your journey is to click right here, read other rider reviews at RevZilla.com. You don't have to take my word for it. Use me as a starting point, form your own opinion by seeing what other riders are saying as well. As always, we will absolutely ship for free over 39 bucks. If you want to talk to a gear geek, see us at RevZilla.com or 877-792-9455. Thanks for watching our detailed breakdown of the new Bell Qualifier Helmet. I'm Anthony, we'll see you next time.